or welcome back to Robbie's Arcade. Well, today I want to talk about, of course, Mortal Kombat. Well, let's talk about the Mortal Kombat games of the 16-bit generation. We're going to talk about the consoles that first got their grubby little mitts on a home version of Mortal Kombat. We are, of course, talking about the Super Nintendo version, aka SNES, and we're going to compare it against the Mega Drive version or Sega Genesis based on where you're living in the world. Now both of these versions were for 16-bit platforms and they were pretty much the big, big two contenders for consoles out there that wanted to bring the Mortal Kombat game home. It was an enormous game in the arcade. It was one of the few games at that time that could rival the titan that was Street Fighter. But of course only one of these two could really prevail because our, in, both consoles had their strengths and their weaknesses and so many people were already committed to their home system. No one was really going to jump ship and buy a new platform. So what it came down to was one, if you already owned the console, of course you went out and played it. This is Mortal Kombat for God's sake. Or two, if at Christmas time you were thinking about getting your hands on a new console, could this be the game that made you decide between a Nintendo and a Sega? Now, both of them have got their own rendition of Mortal Kombat and neither one of them is quite as on the mark as the arcade of course was because neither one of them have the horsepower inside that you get in a giant arcade cabinet like the one at the top um, to support a game of, at this time at that time of that magnitude so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the original arcade game for a little bit give you some idea of what these two games were trying to achieve then we're going to look at them both and then we're going to see how the two compare so straight away first things up let's look at the arcade Mortal Kombat the Arcade, a couple of coins inside. The music and the sound effects were just phenomenal in this game. You had the tower mode there. Every single character was um, recorded and digitized into the game. The, all the characters have got their shadows. We've got those guys in the background, the armor, armored fellas, the blood. Look at the scale of that blood. It wasn't just the fact that blood could be you know, taken from your enemy by a good smack to the face. But it was the fact that a lot of the time that blood just splattered on the ground and stayed. It kind of it added to the sheer permanence of the damage. Then of course there were the fatalities that we'll see in a moment. But <coughs> for the most part, Mortal Kombat in the arcade was just such an insanely brilliant game. So, oh, here comes a fatality. Okay, it's not hugely gory, but it's still a good one. Of course, in this game there were seven people you could choose from. Every oh, if you finish the round without taking a hit, flawless victory, yum yum. Um, everyone had one fatality, of course, in later generations of Mortal Kombat. There would be more fatalities, babalities, friendships, mercies, brutalities. The different per permutations of what they would give you in the game just got bigger and bigger. Now, what the two co home console versions were trying to emulate in this was to have a console experience that was as close as possible to the arcade. So we are talking two-player combat. We're talking end of round finishes. We're talking the score system, the levels, the plot. But what I wanted to give you was a more rounded Mortal Kombat experience. It wasn't just about inserting coins. Mortal Kombat for the Sega and the Nintendo system was to, was to give you an all-round narrative, story-driven and combat experience. And they both achieved it in their own way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave Mortal Kombat there in the middle running but we're going to mute it because the last thing we want to do is let that sound ruin it for the rest of it. So we're going to leave it there. And now we're going to look at the Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat, the first. So straight away, you may have noticed immediately the sound quality is nowhere near as biting. They're, all of these systems are running with exactly the same volume depth. So again, you will be able to tell the difference there between the volume and the output eventually. So here's our SNES version, straight away, we have an options menu now, arcades would have had dip switches. Um, but apparently we're playing on very hard today, which is mind blowing, because this is hardly the easiest game in the world. But the Mortal Kombat for the SNES system here, there was already a few downfalls that we'll talk about later on. There was obviously some pros, but a few cons. The arcade menu there didn't compare to well, we're gonna run all three at the same time later on and just to let you see how they all compare side by side. But ultimately, Mortal Kombat for the SNES was far more colorful than its Mega Drive counterpart. It did lack blood, and it lacked, um, you know, comparable finishing moves. Also, the violence, although it was still quite a violent game, that's um, Scorpion in the middle, they're still torching people. 
that lack of blood was probably one of the key reasons people were buying this game and it put a lot of people off oh here's the bonus stage you do in the middle we will be comparing those as well but it'd be good to see these games running side by side because they the snes one graphically looks fantastic if we look at it the character is a little taller the screen does seem to have been a bit more stretched out but for the most part we've got those moving shadows the energy bars look near enough identical if anything we can see more of the screen than we can on the arcade in the arcade version those characters that were there in the background were much bigger uh, the background sprites as would sang song on the chair but these are little things to complain about. The SNES version does look good. It's just a shame about the lack of gore. I'm not saying it's all about the violence and the gore and the bloodiness and setting fire to people as you do. But there we go. See, there we have the fatality. But now it's far less cutting and it doesn't cause the combustion that you saw in the arcade version. The SNES version is an excellent game. But ultimately, it just had too many shortfalls from it. And the Mega Drive was very quick to grab um, and make ground on a lot of those failures. So with the SNES version, the graphics are more detailed and colourful. Of course, I'm reading from a script. Uh, two, the sound effects are the better of the two between the SNES and uh, the Mega Drive, which you'll see in a moment. The animation runs a great deal smoother. The animation runs comparative, you know, very, very close to that of the arcade we see at the bottom. Ah, the pit. Wallet done. Um... But, of course, there are cons. As we've already stated, no blood, no fatalities. And this was edited due to Nintendo of America's quite heavy censorship rules. Many, many games fell under their sword. And Mortal Kombat was probably one of their biggest um, targets. And they took it down, like, ceaselessly. The Mortal Kombat Mega Drive version, of course. Actually, we'll talk about them later on. Why spoil it? Um, the music is of a far poorer quality on the SNES version. Not just... The fact that it isn't as loud as the arcade or the Sega. Of course, you can boost up the sound, but then you lose the, the integrity of the sound and the fluidity. But on top of that, the music um, port is nowhere near as good as both the Mega Drive and, of course, the arcade. Next, the controls didn't suit a SNES controller. Um, if you wanted to play the game successfully, you needed a six-button controller. There was no denying it. But the six-button controller was far better designed for Mortal Kombat with the uh, low punch, high punch, low kick, high kick system that Mortal Kombat adopts. On top of that, the hit detection can be a little ropey. Uh, this was fixed in later versions and in re-releases. Um, and if anything, there is some very, very low rent NES and uh, Master System versions of Mortal Kombat that have actually better hit detection than the SNES one. But you've probably already noticed part of the way through this. Oh, wow, you're just gonna keep doing the sweep there. The hit detection on the SNES just maybe one in every 10 hits just doesn't seem to connect the way it should. Um, like, likewise, the difficulty on the SNES version, significantly higher. It was just a higher game, a uh, higher difficulty overall, even when you set the game to the lowest difficulty and not the brave guy that is playing this on the hardest difficulty. Now, lastly, the resolution was a little lower. That's why a lot of the sprites do seem a lot bigger in the forefront. The resolution compared with the arcade and indeed with the Mortal Kombat version was lower so this has been the snes version so far let's have a look at the mega drive shall we so what we're going to do we're going to bring that sound down and we're going to introduce the mega drive component so straight away that sound hits you immediately and again i can't stress this enough exactly the same volume depth across the three now the mega drive had a fantastic sound system anyway it, it, you know, a lot of the arcade uh, reproductions you found on those games were just first class. Um, now, once you, the word code has many different definitions. The Shaolin Martial Arts Tournament is governed by a system of rules. Now, what you're looking at here, the reason this wasn't on the SNES version, this little pop-up, was because the, the Mega Drive version, or Sega Genesis, didn't actually arrive with blood and death moves, uh, fatalities. But what it did arrive with was the ability to enable it if you knew the code. So there were two codes. I believe it was A, B, C, A, C, C, something or other. But if you imported that code here in this long, long definition of codes, what it would enable, once you entered the code, get over here, and then the text would go red. Likewise, there was another code, down, up, left, left, A, right, down, a code I've remembered since my childhood, that would enable cheat mode and lots of dip switches to enable the likes of fighting reptile one hit kills and more so down up left left a right down 
And there you go, that was the cheat code. So the Mega Drive version, although the SNES did have its own selection of cheats, you couldn't compare it to the level of ways you could change play in this Mega Drive version. So you would change the fighters you would face up against. You could, it was kind of like a debug mode. On top of that, you could arrange certain things to occur. And that's what these flags were for. Different flags equated to different um, attributes. So infinite energy, more time to commit fatalities, um, one hit kills, enabling um, Reptile, the secret character from the arcade machine. All of these were little things that were introduced in the Mega Drive version. Things that were available to a far lesser degree than they were in the SNES version. So the title screen isn't quite as polished as both the SNES and uh, the character select screen, sorry, isn't it as polished or as shiny as both the arcade and the SNES version? Once we have them all running side by side, you'll see what I mean, but the, the colors just don't seem to be as bright on the Mega Drive. Straight away, the energy bars have really let things down. And there's Reptile there letting you know that the, every, almost all the stages are facing up against him are done. But as you can see straight away, the resolution is higher um, on the Mega Drive one, but because there's more depth and more space to put everything in. But those energy bars are nowhere near what they should look like. Two, um, the counter in the middle there, wrong color entirely. There's lots of ways, even the fonts being used, for some reason they haven't put the text inside the energy bar as uh, you know as faithfully depicted in the snares and indeed the original arcade even the arc even the uh, pit stage itself doesn't look anywhere near as impressive um, now the backgrounds themselves I wish we had this we all have the same background at the same time later on in the video but it's just nice to see the Mega Drive version but unfortunately once you have these three side by side you can see that the Mega Drive does not look anywhere close to the arcade in the same way the SNES does. That said, oh no, we've enabled Reptile. Okay, so we're gonna be fighting Reptile in the next round at the bottom of the pit. Um, so once we start seeing the Mega Drive game being played, so right now we've got Reptile, the secret character, who has his own music as well, which is important too. Not only is the music better on the Mega Drive, but individual characters in their own music was more faithfully created in the Sega Genesis version than it was in that Super Nintendo. Now, the, the character of Reptile that you face up against, there's no denying it, he is hard. This is, he is a tough opponent, Reptile. But straight away, there's no way you can look at all three of these side by side and not think that the Mega Drive, looks wise, is coming off the weakest of all. Now, if we talk about some of the trivia in this game, we can move back to the Mega Drive version. Now, the Mega Drive version, of course, the biggest pro, we've talked about it all along, it's got blood and it's got fatalities and it's got all of the adult content that you wanted, the main reason most people bought Mortal Kombat. Two, the music is better. The sound is better, but not just that, the music itself is just better. As like that lovely tense music there. Um, on top of that, we could say that the attract mode and ending are more arcade accurate on the uh, Mega Drive version. In other words, in the Mega Drive version, once you finish the level, you've got those splash screens that you had on the arcade. The end of level, the continue screen, all of these are far more arcade faithful than that of the SNES. That said, the game in general looks better on the SNES, um, like for like. The controls were better, not just the control of that six button that the Mega Drive system could be purchased with, but the controls themselves were just far, far more responsive in general. That is a huge number of points for defeating uh, Reptile. Likewise, the higher resolution is definitely a bonus, but that doesn't make a huge amount of difference. But thanks to that extra 64 bit pixel horizontal um, option, like this background here, they've removed some of the elements of the background. Those two guards are gone. Shang Tsung is significantly smaller in the background. I'm not sure if the blood still lands on the ground. Yes, it does in the Mega Drive, so at least the blood does stain. You've got that effect. But I still don't understand the reasoning that they decided on going for these smaller characters. I think that's a little disappointing, to be honest with you. Just for the sake of getting that higher resolution, it doesn't look arcade faithful. Now, the weaknesses. The animation is definitely dodgy compared to the other two. There's several frame rates missing all over the shop. Once you compare um, these, all three of these when the same uh, Scorpion is performing all of these moves, you do notice a lot of the frames are missing from 
the uh, Mega Drive version. Likewise, a lot of the voice action. Oh, hello, and we've got Goro on the scene. Um, because the colour count is so much smaller on the Mega Drive version when comparing it um, with the other two, it does come off the weaker, particularly in the blacks and greys. I don't want to sound like Mr. HD TV, but there's no denying it. It does, it, it comes off the weakest of all. And finally, the sound effects, although the game itself music is fantastic, the individual sound effects are missing or lacking in many, many ways. So, let's see how these three look played side by side, showing exactly the same graphics all together at once. Right, so let's see how these three look side by side. We've got all the music playing at the same time. So straight away, the SNES is looking the better of the two. Just graphically looking at those two laid out side by side, it just looks better. Now, the SNES version there, he's taking his sweet time selecting that character, isn't he? Let's see if we can speed that up a little bit, shall we? Because that's taking its sweet, sweet time. So, straight away, look at the way those two backgrounds look side by side for the arcade and with the SNES version as well. Likewise, if we move on to the Mega Drive version there and get that same background up, we can see a huge amount of difference there between them. So we'll bring that up on there, here we go. Look at the way the background has been handled in those three contexts. On the top right there, far greyer and grainier of all. Obviously the arcade looks the best, but the SNES definitely is closer to the arcade there on that background. Now, we already saw the arcade um, bonus stage there, but ultimately between them, when it comes to the music, you've got to give it to the Mega Drive. That is the closest, this arcade one in the middle. Likewise, the gory fatalities and the, um, the, the, sheer, the sheer bite of getting those punches to hit and the ending moves are fantastic. But the Mega Drive just doesn't look as good. I never owned the SNES version, so I never knew just how inferior the Mega Drive version looked compared with the SNES, but there's no denying it. In terms of looks, the SNES is by far and large the most arcade faithful version of these two. And sad, they didn't get away with the blood, and blood will, would be added to later Mortal Kombat games, but still nevertheless, there you go. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you've got any comments or questions about Mortal Kombat or other games that you want to see on the channel, pop them down there in the comments. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio.